Dad. Dad, wake up. Dad. Dad, it's me, Ben. I know who you are, Ben. You're the only other guy that lives here. Yeah, I just heard a noise outside, out the window. Well, you know what that is? What? That's one of the millions of people that lives in the city. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I heard someone is trying to break in, I think. Oh, yeah. You know what, Ben? You're probably having a bad dream. Yeah, I'm telling you, I heard it like four times in a row. Just listen. Yeah. I... Oh, you I, never I, get it when you need it. Wait, I, I just heard something. Yeah. Yeah, do you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. It was metal on metal. Well, it sounds like someone's trying to, like, get the window lock open. First of all, are, are all our doors locked? Well, yeah, but it's the window that sounds oh, like right. it's the problem. That's a good point. That's probably why, why they're using the window, because the doors are so locked. I don't want to die, Dad. <laughs> Uh, maybe we should call 911. Is that it? Uh, that's information. No, 411 is okay. information. Okay, call 911. I'll call 411. Okay, but let me do all the talking. Well, maybe if you call... Wait a second, I think, I think they're actually in the apartment. Wait, wait one second. Oh, my God. Boy, I certainly have... I have no regrets about not owning anything of value. Dad, why are you talking so loud? I don't just want... I want to try to discourage them from coming... From looking around. It's a good thing they haven't passed legislation about automatic weapons in the city. Man, it was a long, hard day on the police force today. You're not kidding. Woo! I'm gonna go to bed, Lieutenant. Oh, man. It's almost like it's pretend. <laughs> yeah. That we're wearing these <laughs> uniforms for no reason. Why do, why Just because we're crazy. Why do I sleep with my revolver on? <laughs> oh, my huge gun. Did that work? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's either. make them some coffee. Let's just get robbed. <laughs> okay. The hell with it. Help yourselves! <laughs> Take whatever you want! Just lock up when you're done. All right, Dad, uh, yeah. now call 911. <laughs> I'm telling you, Laura, it's just very scary when you realize that someone was actually trying to get into your home. Dr. Katz, are you overreacting? No, I'm, I don't think I'm overreacting. I think I'm, I think I'm reacting. I think that, um, you know, somebody break, trying to break into your home. Did they break in? They weren't able to actually get in. Well, that's good. Yeah. But that's only because Ben and I acted with such speed and we were both so vigilant. No, what really happened? Ben woke me up at the middle of the night. He heard a noise. Dr. Katz, you've never been robbed? No, I've never been. I've never been robbed in my entire life. Really? Yep. You seem like such an easy target. Thank you for saying that, but I'm, But apparently I don't appear that way to the, to, the, uh, to the criminal community. Well... To me, it's just totally humiliating. The idea that they could have rifled through my, my personal belongings. Yeah, but they didn't. Yeah, I like that part. Mm. Doctor, you know, I don't know very much about you at all. I mean, but uh, I guess that's part of your... Uh... That's part of the, the whole therapy game. And I, and I use the word game instead of scam. What, do you have a wife and kids? Well, you know what? My family's really off limits in this session. I see, sure. That's fine. What, do you have a son? You look like you have a son. I do have a son. Yeah, I can tell by the bags under your eyes. What's he? How old is he? How old is your son? <sighs> He's a, he's grown. How old? He's 25 years old. So he's sleeping through the night, huh? Such a cute age. I don't know, my parents now, it's weird to watch them get old. Mm -hmm. My mom's, she's getting pathetic. How so? She's so embarrassing. We go to restaurants and they're calling everybody's name the other night. and Every single name they call, my mother said, Lou, Lou, go, go, go find out if that was us. I said, you'll be able to tell when it's us, Mom. They'll use our name. Yeah. Of course, that's like a law of nature. The longer you wait for a table in a restaurant, the more everyone's name starts to sound alike. As the blood sugar level drops, your hearing becomes affected. After 45 minutes, they say, Clark, party of four. Clark, right away, there are 15 people up there. Excuse me, did you just call Dombrowski? They're not listening. My dad's big on using everybody's name. He believes in making people feel important by using their name. So if someone comes up to our table at a restaurant, I'm Don, I'll be your waiter. Okay, Don, hi, Don. Don, can we have warm butter? Don, you know what? I'm going to don my sweater, Don. See, I used it in another context. Yeah. I, I guess I shouldn't uh, shouldn't make so much fun of my parents at this point. I'm uh, I'm a parent too. I have three children, and it's just amazing. Um, you know, you have that first kid, and it's just magical. You think, oh my gosh, that's the most important thing in the world. And then that second kid comes along, and you panic. You think, how how am I going to love someone as much as I love that first one? And then, of course, the second child is born. And the truth is, you love that second child almost as much as the first. I mean, it's really close. It, I mean, it's almost it's almost negligible. But I mean, you know, it's the first one's real special. Right. Third one is, uh, third one is, a uh, third one is, um, you hope the third one's easy to clean. Ben? 
Yeah, Dad. Are you on a secure phone? I'm on a, am I on a secure phone? Yeah. Just want to make sure no one's listening to this conversation. There's a good chance I might not even listen to this conversation. Have you taken my advice to change the locks? I called the locksmith. Uh -huh. I got the locks changed. Right. Then I called another locksmith uh -huh. and got them changed again. That's good thinking. Do you put on an extra deadbolt? There's three locks and a chain lock now. And what about bars on the windows? Well, Dad, I think that's going a little too far, don't you think? And I want to call a home security company. I want them to put in an alarm system. I'm only going to give the code to, to me and to you, and I'm not even sure I'm going to give it to you. But, Dad, I mean, honestly, if, even if the guy had gotten in, I think I overreacted last night. Yeah, when you wrestled me to the ground? Yeah, yeah. I had to wrestle somebody. I, I was thinking today, Dad, that maybe um, the best thing we could do beyond locks and bars on the window would mm -hmm. be get a pit bull. You know, that's not such a crazy idea. You know, because, um... You know, maybe instead of a pit bull, we could just get a recording of one of those dogs barking. Mm. Because that way we wouldn't have to walk it. Yeah, that's true. And we wouldn't have to... Well, we'd still have to name it. You know, if we don't get a pit bull, though? Poodle? Mm, I wouldn't mind a hamster again. I know it won't help uh, deter criminals, but they're so lovable. Hi, Dr. Katz. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. How are you, David? I'm, I'm okay. I'm a little, uh, anxious, a little harried. You know, one thing that I remember from the last session was, uh, I think it's, it's kind of a bad sign when your therapist says, uh, that's a little bit more information than I wanted to know. <laughs> well, I think you misconstrued what I was saying when I said that. Well, that is what, what, what do you mean? That's what you said. Wait, wait, how did you interpret that? That m maybe I was, uh, giving you more information than you wanted to know? Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh. So you're the youngest of five, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I'm the oldest of three, but... Well, well, being the oldest, David, has in many ways shaped who you are. Really? In, in what way? Many ways. Huh. Okay, noted. Noted. Oh, last week you started telling me about the new business before we ran out of time. It's called Dave's Classy Pizza. And how does that work? Oh, well, for like an extra uh, $50, you get your pizza mm -hmm. delivered to you in a limousine. Right. Yeah. And that's the tagline. It's limo fresh. And then, you know, a butler comes out and, Your pizza, sir. You know, it, that's the Australian guy. And then the English guy's like, Hello, governor. Here's your pizza. You know, it depends on what you can pick it, and then there's like a French maid. You know, it's up to you. It's a. It, and it's you a think there's a market for that? Oh yeah, because people like stuff delivered, and they like classiness. You know, and I thought of combining the two, classy delivery. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope it works. I mean, uh, in the in the future, it hasn't worked so far. I've actually lost a, a significant amount of money, but you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I think you're onto something with that idea. And this thing is going to pay off big, Dr. Katz. Big. I, I wish listen, listen, listen. Big. Dr. Katz's office. Hi, Laura. It's Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, uh, Laura? Yes? Have you noticed anything strange about my dad? Could you be a little more specific? Well, you know, ever since uh, the break-in, he seems to be really paranoid, you know? The attempted break-in. Right. I call it the break-in. <laughs> Okay. I just skipped the attempted part. Well, he has been acting a little bit weird. Well, I mean, you know, I've never seen him this paranoid. I mean, it is kind of funny, but I don't, I don't think it's very healthy for a guy that age. Yeah. Well, maybe you should talk to him. Talk to him? Yeah. That's your advice? Talk to him? Uh-huh. You're welcome. You know, Laura, there's hundreds of people that I could have called for advice about this. Oh, Ben. You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. Hmm. Apology accepted. I should be grateful that you even considered calling me at all. You know, is this sarcasm? You know what? I'm so disappointed with myself. I don't even deserve to be on the same phone line as you. Yeah, that was sarcasm. Hey, Laura, let me ask you something. Yeah? Do you ever carry a fake wallet or hide, hide your money in your shoe? Fake wallet? Yeah, you know, just in case. What is a fake wallet? You know, a fake wallet is is something that uh, if you if you get robbed, yeah, it's a way of making the burglars feel like they've done their job, and at the same time saving some money. 
Where's the real one? Yeah, the real one you keep in, the, in a secure spot. I know what you're doing, Dr. Katz, but you can't live in fear. Yes, I can. You're letting this attempted burglary thing get the better of you. I'm just being cautious, Laura. Well, it sounds like you're being paranoid. Well, thank you. That, that's good advice. But what I really need to know is where can I hide my real wallet? How about shoving Hey, 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 never mind. You know who I hate? Give me a hint, Lou. My grandmother. And why is that, Lou? She's old and uninteresting to me. Mm -hmm. I don't really hate her. My grandmother, though, she, she, you know what it is? My grandmother's very, well, uh, you, know, she's, you know what? My grandmother, she is very spry, but her eyes are getting bad. And the best way to negotiate uh, her territory is to treat her like a rhinoceros. If you're upwind, stay there, because she will charge if she smells you. Mm -hmm. But you were telling me that she, she still loves to have the family over, cooks dinner for them. Ugh, every time we eat there, sometimes I do have this feeling, because she's a pretty good cook. I say, oh, if I don't get very sick later, this was good. What, what, what was your relationship like when you were a child? She, I used to, she used to bribe me for co-correspondence. If I sent a letter, she would send me a dollar. And, I, and it was classic. You know how when you were a kid, you'd always break up in your piggy bank and be like, $19. Boy, I wish I had $20. Dear Grandma, how are you? I am fine. Bye. Love me. Mom said I had to make this a whole page, and then you write whole page really big so it takes up a whole page <laughs> um, what else do you know that in this country there's a, one home is broken into approximately every 15 mm. minutes so since I've been here approximately one home has been broken into which is not so bad it's not bad I have a neighbor who doesn't lock her door and she doesn't do it because it just doesn't feel good Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. What's her address? <laughs> you know, you've probably treated patients who've who've been victims of some kind of criminal act. So, I mean, mm -hmm. what would you? How do you deal with that? How, what do you? <clears throat> no, I do. I do treat people who who were traumatized in some way. What would you say to them? Get over it. Uh, uh, did you actually see the guy? Well, it was like seeing him. I heard the tapping sound. When you hear this at three in the morning, believe yeah. me, it's like seeing a guy with a mask. Ooh. Did Ben see him? Ben heard a different sound. He heard like this. <laughs> Maybe the guy was having coffee on the fire escape. Yeah. I can't believe I called 911 and they said it was a wrong number. How wrong can you be? Huh? Did you dial like N-I-N-E-1-1? -E -1 -1? I mean, that might have been the problem. <sighs> okay, you win. You're the stupidest guy at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door. Uh, and who's there? It's me. Let me ask you this then. If you're really who you claim to be, and who, I'm sorry, who did you claim to be? Dad, it's me. Open the door. What's your mother's maiden name? I'll be back in an hour. Ben, did you get the, um, did you get the sweet and sour pork like I asked you to? I did, yes. Anyone follow you? Dad, when are you going to relax? When this, when this beer kicks in is when I'm going to relax. Oh man, this is crazy. Let's. I Dad, think... why don't we just sit and eat? And uh, you know what? There's no possible way that we're going to get robbed again. I'm thinking about maybe moving to a gated community. <laughs> you know, see, that's that's the problem. You get paranoid about yeah. this, and then you can't live your life normally ever again. Uh, you know, the cops suggested to me that it might be an inside job. So, how well do you know me? I mean, it could have been you. It's possible. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking about getting a second peephole put in the door, waist high, just in case someone small comes calling. Hmm. That's a good idea. You know, for a minute, I thought you, uh, you were going too far. Why don't we get a phone book and we can just keep the peephole we have? You're afraid of small people now. Is that it? Well, every scary movie I've ever seen involves a, a midget that kills. Like what? <laughs> Name any movie. Um, midget killers? They've got them. Yeah. Too small to let you live? I'm small and you're dead. If you lift me up again, I'll kill you. There's a million of them. Look down, now you're dead. Dad, you know, the attempted robbery was like a week ago. Yeah, look at this. They have eight different kinds of pepper spray then. Really? Yeah. Can you put it on food? I think. Yeah. Because I like the hot stuff. There's one with a grounded pepper spray. <laughs>
That would be a good way to do it. You pretend you're putting some of this grounded pepper on them on their food, yeah. the burglars. <laughs> then you whack them over the head with the big thing. Right. They, they have to have food in order for that to oh, that's right. work. That's right. Well, we, we put out a spread. You know, Dad, I can't go on living like this. Maybe we should, uh, you know, go to the other side. You know what I mean? You're talking about, about starting a life of crime? No, I think a life of crime would be rather romantic, don't you think, Dad? Well, what kind of criminal do you, do you see yourself being? You know, you watch all those movies, like Butch Cassidy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'd like to rob a stagecoach. You yeah. know, they still have those? No, that's my point. You know, we'd be, we're already out of work. What do they use now to transport people back and forth? Uh, airplanes? We should rob one. No, but you know what? I really want to be in a situation, though, Dad, where we pull a heist, mm -hmm. and I get shot, yeah. right? Right. And then you have to take me to one of those uh, guys who aren't really a doctor, <laughs> but who could sew me up, like, uh, across a, the border. A seamstress. <laughs> a tailor. Right. You know, a guy who has to bring me in his back room with no anesthetic, give me a slug of liquor, and then <laughs> sew me up, and then I'd die. <laughs> All right, bad ending, but <laughs> interesting life. Sure. Let's go to bed, and we'll leave the windows wide open. <laughs> you got it. You're crazy. You know, as long as they're going to rob us, we might as well get some fresh air. Yeah, you feeling yeah. better now, though? Yeah. Why don't you give your old uh, son a good night hug? All right. There Come here. Go. Get over here. I got gotcha. you. Yeah? Okay, now put me down. All right, good. Okay. Now, what's this? Stole your wallet. Oh, uh -huh. man. <laughs> you suck. Yeah, check. Look inside that wallet. Wait, what? Fake wallet. Nah, you got me. <laughs> when you're good, you're good. Oh, Dr. Katz, I was in uh, the Seattle airport, mm -hmm. and as you're walking to baggage claim, they have this nine-panel depiction of a magic act. It's painted. I mean, magic is already boring, live. You know, even if the guy's right there in front of you, you know, the most you're going to get is like, oh, wow, that is my card. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. But to paint a magic act, I can't, it didn't make any sense to me, but it, it works actually on some weird level. You do get emotionally invested in it because you start off and the first panel is, you know, this guy is dressed as a magician and he's got the disappearing box and you see his assistant. And then you, you progress down the, the wall there and, uh, and you see that the guy gets in the box, and there are no wires, and he turns the box, and then the next panel is the box is being turned again. And then the very last panel is the box being opened up, and the guy has disappeared. Hmm. And, and you find yourself really fascinated. Like, how did they do that? That's amazing. And you run back really quickly, and you watch it again. You go, okay, yeah, there, he's getting in. And clearly there are no wires, and I don't see him. And then he, the, you get there, and it's like, yeah, the guy's gone. He did it. So, Dr. Katz, I had a, a great Easter, um, and I was thinking, you know, it's celebrating the ascension of Jesus into heaven, yeah. and I was wondering if when Jesus was rising up to heaven, if you had grabbed onto his leg, could you go up to heaven? Hmm. And you could be up in heaven. You'd be like the first guy in heaven. And Jesus, maybe he would, like, shake his leg, but if you had a firm grip, you'd be right up in heaven with Jesus, hanging with Jesus and God. And, they, you know, walking on clouds, they couldn't let you go. You'd no. be up there. It'd be so neat. That's what I would have done had I been an apostle. You know, I was wondering when Jesus was ascending into heaven, um, do you think his ears popped? Good chance. Hey, but also, what if you were on the ground when Jesus was ascending, and then you suddenly remembered that he had your keys? That would have... Jesus! I my keys! Throw down my keys, please! Jesus, listen! Before He's going too high. He's got my keys. My keys! My house keys! They're in your... Oh... You know, Doctor, I'm so self-conscious. One time I, I was with a person. You, you seem to be great at this. You, you know, people come in and tell you all kinds of boring things, and you never even yawn or anything. I, I, I was listening to someone talk. I was having lunch with this guy, and he's talking. I got so bored, and I yawned, and yeah. we just started the lunch, and I... I had to pretend that that was how I talked. I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's good sound. So now he thinks you're alert, but an idiot. Yeah, every time he calls, I have to go, oh, yeah, well, anyway. I'm I wish I could be more confident. You know who I admire? Who? The sixth grader who had sex with his teacher. Ah. That kid must have a tremendous amount of self esteem. I mean, I wouldn't even look my teacher in the eye. Can you imagine this kid? What confidence? I mean, she says, do you want to stay after school? I'm sure the kid's saying things like, I don't know. 
Depends. I'm supposed to play soccer, but I can move some stuff around. What, uh, what do you have in mind? It's weird, you know, kids are, in t- terms of development, every month is critical. Like a six-month-old can do things that a three-month-old can't, and a, a, a one-year-old can do things that, that a nine-month-old can't. And it's really weird. You, you know what the truth is, doctor? You never make up that difference. That's right. My friend Steve, he was born uh, in April. I'm born in July. He's a little bit better reader than I am. Oh, you know what the music means, Lou. Our time is up. And also, you should pick up your jacket today at the cleaners. Oh, that's right. I, I just want to have everything prepared so that we don't, at the last minute, forget something. I'll pick up the pants, too. I'm excited about this. This is I'm very happy for Rachel. Well, you love uh, you love weddings. I love weddings. I love Rachel, and I, and I really hope she finds happiness in this relationship. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Yeah, but look, she doesn't have to know that. Well, I'm not going to say anything. No. Especially not in the speech. Are you planning to make a toast? I think I will, yeah. But I think you're going to have to make a speech, too. Maybe we should go up together. Okay, let's try one. Okay. Hi, I, hey. I am uh, Dr. Jonathan Katz. Rachel is my niece, my son, Ben. Can I stop you right here, Dad? What's that? You don't have to be so formal in a speech. Let okay, it, okay. Let be looser. Hey, I be... would like to pro- propose a toast. Oh, man, you're drunk. Yeah, but so is everybody else. I think the wedding's going to be a lot of fun, Dad, you know? Yeah, I'm sure it will be. You know, it's going to be fun watching you uh, try and waltz with Rachel. You know, when they call you. Yeah, that's not going to happen because I'm, I'm going to... Well, it uh, is going to happen because uh, you are going to take the place of Uncle Morty. No, I, I, I don't think that... Um, well, who else is going to dance with her? Well, maybe so, her husband? No, the first dance is traditional. The father of the bride, Yeah. which is you... We mean since Uncle Morty is dead. Yeah. This is where you come in, Ben. You're going to have to cover for me and tell them that I pulled a hamstring, okay? Why? You just have to dance with her. See, see the thing has been... I, I can't dance and I can't dance in front of people, Ben. I just can't do it. It's like, uh, you know, you know how some people can't speak publicly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said publicly. All oh, right. Well, I I can't dance in front of people, Ben. I can dance at home. I can dance in front of me. You've seen me dance. But, yeah. Do you know how to waltz? No, I don't know how to waltz. I don't know how to do any dance. The only thing, the only thing I can do even slightly is the cha cha. I don't think that would be appropriate. Not if she's waltzing. Hey, Laura, any messages for me? Any Anything I need nope. to know about? Any wedding cancellations? No. Nope. Any reprieves on the governor? No. Nope. Nothing, huh? Nothing. Okay. Hey, what do, what do I hear? Sounds Brazilian or... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just music. I love it. It's, it's got that crazy Latin feel. Dr. Katz, isn't it time for you to go to work? Yeah, I'm just heading in there. Okay, bye. Where'd you get that? Uh, where'd you get that music? Oh, I I just got it at a at a yard sale. You're kidding me. No. Nope. Wow. You don't have any waltz music, do you? N- no. Okay. I think the music is distracting me, Laura. Mm, no, it's not. You checked? I checked. Okay, I'll give it another try, but. Okay, I... and don't come out until you cured somebody. Well, you may never see me again. <laughs> Nobody gets cured in mental health. Did I tell them that when they come in? No, I'll I'll tell him.
So it's your, it, your, mo it's your mother's style that embarrasses you? I, I'm nothing like her. I've never looked like her. I've always been thin. Mm -hmm. My mother's like big Eastern European peasanty looking, you know, like she looks like if she lifted up her skirt, there'd be a huge brisket underneath there. Right. You know, she's upset that I'm in therapy, you know. She's always saying to me, talk a little less about me, try to be a little more like me. You wouldn't be there in the first place, you know, and I, I don't think that that's true. Well, that's not, that's not fair of her to say that. Every time I'm going out with a guy, I bring him home, and then he breaks up with me. Mm. You know, because the family, they're crazy. First of all, you know how they're always loud, screaming, yelling? I bring a new person in, they all of a sudden turn British. They're like, ah! He walks in, oh, hello, how are you? My last boyfriend, I, I bring him home to meet my family. Yeah. My mother starts grilling him. She starts wearing him down. She says, so, what do you do for a living? And he said, I'm a musician. And? And I have a band. And? And I play guitar. And? And this went on for like 15 minutes, till finally I found out he once murdered a man. So maybe she's doing me a favor. I, I don't know. I don't know. I always feel like men are simple and women are complex. Mm. We love you guys, but we love you in a patronizing way. Like kind of how you love the village idiot. You know what I mean? I don't love the village idiot. I mean, I respect him. I, I keep on trying to figure out where to meet men, and I don't know where to meet men. And, and mm -hmm. my cousin Judy keeps on trying to get me to go to one of these Jewish singles organizations, and I, I, I can't. I can't do anything that my cousin Judy does, because my cousin Judy, she's one of these types. She's a Zionist, and she's very active and involved, and she's always doing the Israeli folk dancing and right. taking seminars, and she's obsessed with her Judaism, you know? It's sickening. And she'll always call me up at these seminars like, Hi, Susie. Her voice is like a cross between Kermit and Julia Child. Yeah. Hi, Susie. It's Judy. Um, we're doing a seminar sponsored by the Jewish Women's Resource Center and the Jewish Historical Archives on Zionism in the 20th century and Jews who spent their senior ethical butts and ju 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 She's obsessed, you know? Mm -hmm. And then she'll come running into the house trying to get us all to sing these Israeli folk songs. Zoom, golly, 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 zoom, golly, golly. Hey, Lord, do you remember a saying to me, that this is a while ago, that if I ever needed you, that you would be there? No. Do you ever remember saying to me that maybe if I needed you, that you might be there? No. Well, the time has come. I need you. Oh, no. I am invited to my niece's wedding. You need me to get a gift? No, Ben pointed out that she's going to expect me to <sighs> dance with her. Yeah. And... So what's the problem? I don't dance. I can't dance. I won't dance in public, especially the waltz, because I don't know how to waltz. That's the easiest dance that there is. It's easy if you know how to do it, but I don't know how to do it. You just All you have to do is just step and count. I can step and I can count, but I can't step and count. Would you, in your kindness, give me one quick lesson in waltzing? Absolutely not. Would you teach me how to do the foxtrot? No. Would you teach me how to do everything but the waltz, and then I'll figure out by the process of elimination how to waltz? <sighs> Would you teach me how to play gin? Ron, Dr. Katz asked me to talk to you about payment. Uh. We had some trouble with your last check. It bounced. No, they're fine. The checks are fine. No, it did. It bounced. Oh, no, 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 no. Here, uh, here, listen to this. Hello, this is the president of a bank, and I will verify that Ron's checks are good. Ron, that's a recording. They're fine for him to use. Of you. He has plenty of money. Hey, Ben, what are you doing, man? Hey, uh, let me ask you a question. What's that? Offhand, how many videos do you think I've rented overall? I don't want to reach for the computer, but... Really? I could have... look that up and give you the exact number. <laughs> really? That's been so many videos, I assume I'm probably one of the preferred customers now, huh? I told you, we don't laminate the cards here, so it's not going to happen. How come you don't have, like, a gold member or something that I can... This is not like a blockbuster... This is Vic's video palace. I've never seen Vic. Who is he? You don't need to see Vic. Well, I'd just like to see the namesake of the, of the video palace, the guy who... When you get to Vic's level, you don't have to show up. Have you seen Vic? I haven't even seen Vic. You've never met Vic? I am not allowed to meet Vic until I'm employed here three years. Wow. That's the only reason I'm staying. Yeah. I actually got accepted to four different graduate schools. But you just want to meet Vic. I want to meet Vic. 
I don't blame you. Ron? Um, he, he's not here, and uh, he sent me over. Well, let me, let me ad- address this question to the guy with the fake mustache, then. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? He, I'm feeling fine. You know what? Why don't I put on something fake, and we can just do it that way? Sure. Now, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much help do you think I, uh, I need, and how long before I won't need any help? I would say 8 and 6, respectively. You're right. You look nervous. What, what do you mean? I don't know. You look like you're fidgety. The thing is, Todd, I, I normally when I would just come by here and I would look around. Right. And then I would buy some of the movie food mm-hmm. <laughs> that you have so prominently displayed all the time, which I love. And maybe I would rent a couple just, you know, action videos for myself. Right. Today is not that day. Today is a different day. All right. Today I'm here more for someone. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, did you want to rent a porno movie? No. I mean, yes. Listen, I got to teach a guy how to waltz. <laughs> yeah? No, no, no. I really got to teach a guy how to waltz. Wow. And it's my dad. Mm-hmm. Have you been to a wedding? No. Oh, you should go to one. Really? They're great. Everything's free. You serious? Yeah. The food, the drinks. Do you want to walk over to the dance instruction section? You have a dance instruction section? Yeah, we keep it in a separate room. It's right behind that curtain, that soundproof curtain. Why do you hide the dance instruction tapes? You'll know in a couple of minutes. I've I've read about this thing where I can use a puppet and maybe I can talk through the puppet. Yes, I know something about that. So I thought I'd use a puppet anyway, so here, I'll try that again. I really have nothing to say, you know. I I really have a hard time uh, opening up. Well, wait a second. Well, why don't you speak through a puppet? too, and then maybe that would help you out. Sure, that might help. Here, put this on. Hello, I have very much to tell you. Now, who is that puppet talking to? Is He's that... talking to you, I guess, because you're Dr. Katz, so he would... And is this a conflict of interest, Ron? Oh. Are there things that the rabbit wouldn't be comfortable talking about in front of you? Ah, <sighs> yeah. What should I call you? Um, my, uh, Ron? My Ron? name is Ron. And so is my name. Okay, Ron. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to uh, any any Ron. Oh, all right, I should talk to the public. Because I guess. last last time we were here, we were trying to talk about, and it made you uncomfortable your relationship with your brother. So I'm well, just I, wondering if any of the any. I don't of you, have a brother. And you? I do. And how do you feel about that brother? Um, he's much bigger than me. Mm-hmm. He has legs. Do you love him? Yes, I do. You can't assume that the puppet is going to get in touch with your brother, Ron. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to your brother. It's not fair to the puppet. This is the one, man. This is the best this one? Is, I've heard nothing but good things about this one. I don't trust the couple on the cover. You know what? I'll even guarantee this one. That has your personal guarantee. Personal. Well, this is the beginner tape, which you might want to start with. Unless you think he... You well, know. for him, I think it would be an introductory thing. For me, I would go right to advanced. There's advanced, then there's pro. Mm. But this totally, you have my guarantee. As long as you watch the Charles Bronson tapes afterwards. I have felt manipulated most of my life. Mm-hmm. Everyone around me is very controlling. Right. Wait a minute, that's not true. Shut up. Hello, can I speak for once? All right, go ahead, jeez. Um, I really don't have much to say. See, Ron, I think... By the way, it's not my fault that the tiny one doesn't say much, because that's not my fault. It's my, it's the rabbit. Ron, the, the rabbit has been nothing but cooperative and, and resilient, and I think to try to pin this one on the bunny is wrong. <laughs> Can you draw a diagram or something? It's based on three, four times. Right. There's three beats per measure and then four measures in, in the phrase. So there's four steps until you come around and get back to where you started and then you start over again. It's so easy. You just one, two, three, step, yeah, step. It's like you're talking another step. language to me. I, okay, I, I just can't listen really understand, to me. I can't really understand just what you're saying. Just listen to me. I see your lips moving. I hear sound. Is there okay, a sound? Okay, look, is here, I'm going to put some tape show- on the floor. Watch me. Yeah. See the tape? Right. And just... Step one, two, three, f- well, foot, feet apart, feet together, feet apart, feet together. Follow the tape, it just go looks around like and tape around to and me. count. I'm looking just at keep I know counting. It's there for You're a not reason, counting. So, I mean, you know, I was dating this guy and he broke up with me. Do you feel bad? Sure, 
Sure I do. Don't, because he's dead now. But, no, he's not. But his voice is a couple of octaves higher than it used to be. Right. Did you ever run into an ex-boyfriend or a girlfriend and you think to yourself, was I in a deranged, psychopathic dementia? Was I in a complete psychotic state when I was having sex with this man every night twice on Fridays? I... <clears throat> or then, you know, I get this really scary moment where I ran into an ex-boyfriend and I look at him and I think, ugh, I talked baby talk to this man. It's so mortifying. Yeah. The last guy I was going out with, you know, remember him, this Italian guy from the Bronx? Mm -hmm. And I, I used to get turned on by, like, the weirdest things. Like, the way he talked, I would get turned on by. Like, he would call me up, he'd say stuff like, so, I'll be over your house a tree. And this would turn me on. Right. And then I would race home to listen to my answering machine mm -hmm. to see if I had messages from him so that I could analyze every nuance of how he felt about me. And I'd listen to the messages over and over, 15, 25, 30 times. And i get messages from him like this. Hello, so this is Joey. I hate this freaking answering machine. I'll call you later, all right? It's Joey. I hate this freaking answering machine. I'll call you later, all right? It's Joey. Wait, Susie, do I have to hear it 30 times? What do you think he really meant by that? Oh, all the couples in my family hate each other, like my Aunt Sylvia and my Uncle Ben. Right. They've been married like 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. and they think it's normal to speak to each other in this despicable way. They hate each other, and they don't even know it. Like, they'll be having a conversation. Aunt Sylvia will be on the phone with one of her girlfriends. You know, Gloria, it's very sad to find out that your son wants such a mutilating operation. It's a my joy, not yours. What the hell's the matter with you, you moron? You can't find a lousy sock. These are my role models. Hello, Laura. Why are you walking like that? I'm just gliding, walking on air. Mm. Life is a dance, Laura. Yeah? We get one go around, and then, uh... Why do you have your pants pulled up so high? I hug them up. Why? Better movement. Right. I learned that in the waltz video. They don't say hike your pants up, but all the guys... Yeah? ...had their pants hiked up. <sighs> no, but the, the guy said, the guy with the thin mustache... Don't ever listen to a guy with a thin mustache. But look at him on the box cover. Smiling like he's happy. Wow. You can tell inside he's, he hurts. Mm. He feels pain, too. I think it's because his pants are hiked up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dad. Always a pleasure. I got good news for you. Really? Well, I got something for you that I think is going to help you get through, uh, through the wedding and through the dance. Oh, I can prescribe that stuff. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? I rented a, a waltz tape today at the video store. Oh, Ben, that is so sweet. You didn't have to do that for me. Well, I watched the tape, and uh, I'll tell you something. The waltz is it's not an easy dance. But based on what I saw in the video, mm -hmm. it's um, easily learned. You just have to commit. Yeah. I've played both parts. Right. The boy and the girl. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll tell you, I don't like to lead. Yeah. But um, you got to watch this tape. Ben, I, I, that really is, you've gone above and beyond the call of duty. I set up the apartment. Mm -hmm. I cleared out the furniture from the living room. Right. So we got room to move. Mm -hmm. Bought new speakers for the stereo. So mm -hmm. we can kick the waltz loud. This is tricky. A tricky one for me, Ben, is between the time I saw you this morning mm -hmm. and this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, Laura taught me how to waltz. What? Laura agreed to give me one short lesson on the waltz, and that's all it took. Really? And I know I now know how to waltz, so I really appreciate the effort you made. So Laura taught you how to waltz. It never occurred to me that she would agree to teach me how to waltz, but but we struck a deal, and and now I I know how to waltz. Hmm. Well, I'm happy for both of you. I'm glad that uh, that worked out for you. Thanks, Ben. It's nice to uh, strip someone of their dreams. Hey, look, I'm sorry, Ben. That the, I, if the, I'm sorry that you made this trip for nothing. Yeah. But I will see you at home, and we can uh, have a nice evening together. That's true. I hope. Uh... I hope when uh, when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. at the wedding, when uh, and all your waltz lessons with Laura has to come to bear, right there in one moment, with all the pressure, I hope you fail. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you embarrass yourself and Rachel and everyone at the wedding. But me, I know how to waltz. Yeah. Because I watched a videotape. I didn't take some half-ass lesson with my secretary. Does this mean that we won't be watching uh, Death Wish 1 through 5? No, we're still doing that. You know, I think I think it's my mistake when I book that many people back to back. 
I feel like I'm cheating my patients and I'm cheating myself, mm. you know? Yeah, that's great, Dad. But nothing that a little uh, three hours of uh, Death Wish 2, 3, and 4 wouldn't cure. Yeah, I'm, I don't feel much like watching them tonight, thanks. I think I'm just going to go to my uh, room and maybe watch the Waltz video again. Ben, there's some, clearly something going on here. You, are you still mad about the no, Waltz? No, you can thing? watch the uh, videos, uh, the Bronson. You, you make it seem, I feel like I'm slinking around, you know, like I cheated on you. Well, I guess in a way you did. I mean, I went and made an effort to teach you how to dance. I thought I was going to be part of the process, and then I was just cut out, summarily cut out. Well, Laura made me an offer that I couldn't refuse, and and, and What she do you mean an me offer? I asked her if she would teach me how to waltz. She said no, and then we started negotiating, and she came up with what I thought was a very fair deal. You mean you paid her to teach you? Of course I paid her to teach me. You think she's going to dance with me for nothing? Has she made money out of this deal? She made a couple of bucks, yeah. How much? Well, when you factor out how much time it took her, $200. Wow. She is. Uh, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she wants, and she knows how to get it. She can milk everything for everything. Plus, I wasn't allowed to touch her. Oh, Dad, I would have touched. You know what? This is going to sound crazy, but you have the tapes. I do. We both now know how to waltz. Why don't we just put on some music and, and really just uh, cut loose? I think it would be a nice way for us to make up after, after this little tiff. You mean so every time we get into a fight now, we're going to waltz? Not every time. But every time we get in a fight about waltz, and we should waltz. <laughs> Dad, watch the hands. All right? You're riding a little low there. Ouch. I'm sorry. Ouch, two, three is what I mean. Well, you're not letting me lead. You know, Laura didn't teach you that well, did she? But Laura also didn't have two days growth. I'm dipping you right now. Ow! Yeah, yeah. Can I practice leading just for a minute, Ben? Because I, I, that's what I'm going to need to do with Rachel. Um, please? Let's talk about mm -hmm. putting back together the pieces of, of your life, because when you came in here six months ago, you said you wanted to try to rebuild your life. All right, well, let's do it. I'm ready. Um, Actually, I've been trying to build my confidence a little lately. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. And how, how have you been doing that? Well, I've gone around and collected testimonies of various people who, uh, who think I'm funny. Mm -hmm. Let me play one of them for you. And is it just funny? Is that where you, where you get your strength from, people who think you're funny? What about people who think you're kind or... Or loving or caring. Oh, I don't care about that. Just funny. Yeah. Okay, let me hear what you got. Hi, this is uh, Oprah Winfrey. I want to say that I think Ron is a very funny, funny individual, and uh, I would have him on my show anytime, and I think he does a great job. Keep it up, Ron. It's uh, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, that's... And uh, you might know this person. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Bob Hope. Uh, Ron, keep it up. Very funny. It was Bob Hope. Yeah. He's the man. Sounds a lot like you, Ron. Oh, no, no. Well, here you might, might hey, listen to this person. Yeah. Ron, this is uh, President Clinton, President Bill Clinton. Uh, I you know what the music means here, Ron. I'll turn this up. Country 